supposed Bible contradiction. Did you? This is inspiring philosophy. YouTuber or apologist. I love this guy, but I'm still. I'm full of doubts. I believe in Jesus, but I'm full of doubts. It, is an, it has become an obsession with me to wonder is Jesus real? As the Bible says? Born of the virgin, never sinned or did anything wrong in his entire life, died and resurrected from the grave? Is this really historically true? I want it to be. But since they had proven that there was no Moses, no Exodus, no Noah's Ark, no Noah's Flood, everything's up in the air for me. I'm angry at God. I'm cursing God. I'm angry at God for how I look. And I curse God if I do not get my hair transplants so I, I can get my hair out of hell. Hair. Right now, Screw God! No, no, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. I want. I. I. I need Jesus, but I'm saying, in my anger, fuck you, God. Inspired philosophy. I love to listen to him. With his apologetics, he gives me hope to keep on believing in Jesus one more day. And maybe it is. It, but it. That maybe, just maybe. But at the same time, he does not cure my doubt. I'm still left hungry for more. Still left questioning. Jesus, are you really real? Because of the putrid failure of apologists to defend Christianity today. Is Christianity even real? I mean, apologists have to Bend themselves in the pretzels to prove the point. I love listening to inspiring philosophy, and he get with his apologetics give me hope to, that hey, maybe this is true after all. Yes, but after all, but when I go home, there's still the no one doubts. Can God and Jesus even? cure my doubts but here's something that really 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 pisses me off did Jesus cleanse the temple at the beginning or end of his ministry in the synoptics we read that Jesus went up to Jerusalem and cleansed the temple the same week that he died but in John we read this occurred at the beginning of his ministry because of this many scholars argue John moved the temple cleansing to the beginning of Jesus's ministry for theological reasons they say some people say that in the synoptic gospels it was a cleansing of the temple that led to the crucifixion of Jesus but in the gospel of John it was a resurrected raising of Lazarus from the dead and it really bothers me that neither Matthew Mark or Luke mentioned Something as momentous as the resurrection of Lazarus by Jesus. Why? And and since John was the last gospel written, this works against. This works in favor of my doubts. But let's continue listening to this man. And given the cultural context, this is a possible explanation. Ancient biographers would often organize events in a topological order instead of a chronological order. However, John I call that dishonesty. John adds some additional details that makes this interpretation unlikely. Oh? First, John says Jesus went to Jerusalem for the Passover. Then John ends this section by saying Jesus left and went to the Judean countryside. Then later we read, when he came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him having seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the feast, for they too had gone to the feast. This verse draws back to... But if John was butchering chrono chronology in favor of just telling stories, you should, you should expect this if it, there was only one cleansing of the temple. Cleansing of the temple. 
the events that would have taken place earlier in chapter 2. John seems to be suggesting a chronological order, with the temple cleansing happening early in Jesus' ministry. He doesn't seem to be ordering his events topologically, but chronologically. Why, does it, why the hell doesn't John men, also mention the cleansing of the temple at the end of Jesus' Jesus's ministry? Second, John records that the Jews said to Jesus, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But what did he say first? Jesus said, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And John, only in the book of John, only in the book of John, Nowhere in the Synoptic Gospels does Jesus, is Jesus recording, is saying, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Speaking about the temple of his body and him rising from the dead on the third day. Keep that in mind. This is another chronological marker that fits best with the beginning of Jesus' ministry, as scholars like Harold Honer and Colin J. Humphreys note. Alan Chapel says, this results in what one study calls a surprising corroboration of the Johannan chronology. So John seems to believe Jesus did cleanse the temple early in his ministry, whereas the synoptics suggest it happens at the end. But Craig Blomberg notes the majority position of Christian writers, up until recently, has simply been that Jesus cleansed the temple twice. Okay, 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 okay. I'm about to hurt your feelings and show... Why this is impossible. In the synoptic gospels, one of the synoptic one said, God damn, I curse you God if I don't talk straight without this goddamn stroke. Fuck you. In the one of the synoptic gospels, when the false witnesses are being false witnesses against Jesus, and it's either in Matthew or Mark or Luke. It's one of the, I'm too lazy to look it up, but it's in there. One, uh, 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 it says that last came these two false witnesses. This fellow said, I am able to destroy this temple made with hands and rear, up, rear it up in three days without hands. You hear that? You hear that? That sounds like a twist of what Jesus said in the book of John. And keep in mind, only in the book of John does Jesus say, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And John, and yet in the the Gospels, when the false witnesses are bringing false witnesses against Jesus, one of the, false, the two false witnesses are that Jesus said, I am able to destroy this temple made with hands and build it up without hands in three days. So, how in the hell could something Jesus cleansing of the temple three years earlier be referenced three years later? Do you get what I'm saying? Screw you, God. I can't convey my point because it's goddamn stroke. Jesus, I'm asking, are you real? But until I get some freaking answers that don't do not still still leave me hungry. Inspired philosophy has some sweet philosophy, some sweet answers, but they, but they leave me still doubting. They give me hope to keep on believing in Jesus one more day, but I foresee problems in the future with this type of. Ap apologetics right now I looked at apologetics with disgust these atheists on YouTube without brain arguments are putting the Christians to silence and shame so if Jesus is real why in the hell is Jesus Jesus said when they question you when they're persecuting you do not, do not prename me. God, fuck it. Fuck you, God, for this stroke. I curse you, God, if I don't speak clearly. Jesus said, do not premeditate an answer. What you shall give your adversaries. For it shall be given you in that same hour 
what ye shall say. For I for it is not ye that speak by the Spirit of your Father. And another passage in, uh, in another it's not the gospel Jesus says I will give you your mouth which none of your adversaries shall be able to gainsay nor resist do you see the answers being given by these YouTube apologists and YouTube Christians giving answers that the atheist can't resist or speak against hell no hell no so Jesus is either lied or something's fucked up well, these people are not real Christians. Speaking for you, Jesus. Which one? Which which one is it? Are you even real? Goddamn fuck, god dick shit, mother dick, and the goddamn rag bitch cunt fuck slut.